Welcome back to the fourth episode in this mini-series where we play Mexico during its different phases throughout history. Or at least un until now, because then it's going to be Hoi 4 and well, that's all history, so well, we don't talk about that or yet. Well, yet. Today we shall explore the 19th and early 20th century in Victoria too. It's time to venture into the world of 1836, turn Mexico from, from an unstable mess with constant revolts, wars, and turn it to a world power in the western world while avoiding all the major national catastrophes of this period, or at least trying to avoid as many as possible. So we start on January 1st of 1836, and things already look grim. Mexico is a complete mess and has a lot of problems. We start with a non-existent population, with a 1.5 million population, as we start as a dictatorship, immigrants and um, because we have immigration quotas as our immigration laws, we're not gonna get a lot of men in these uh, well, early years to fill the army, so... Well, speaking of which, we only have an army of 30,000 men that can, we can barely even field, a non-existent industry with only 4.5% uh, per, uh, of the whole population can, that can actually read, and all, well, only giving us 4.69 uh, points of research. Talking about research, we also start with almost nothing, and probably worst of all, we will have a series of rebellions that will cause a lot of harm to our nation early on, with Yucatan, the Rio Grande, California, will eventually revolt, and this is all without mentioning the fact, with the fact that we started war with Texas before we even have to fight the Americans. If you combine all of that and you don't, and if you don't play your cards right, this will lead to a national catastrophe in just the first uh, 15 years of the game. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. That's okay. Things are gonna be okay. So to avoid that, we will first need to defeat the Texans before everything spirals out of a, out of a control. This revolt would not be so difficult to deal with if it was in vanilla, but since we're playing with the GFM mod, which is based on HPM, this war has a, a few specific events that would basically destroy your country early on if you don't play this right. To be more specific, the president at this time, Antonio Lopez de Santana, led the army to crush the revolt originally, and well, to say that he fucked up big time would be an understatement as he got captured by the Texan rebels because he decided to go to sleep. No joke, that's what actually happened in real life. So to simulate this in game, should you try to well, siege any of the provinces in Texas, there is going to be a chance that will increase each time you siege more provinces where he is going to get captured. This basically means a game over, and while you can win the war even with the event firing, this is really gonna hurt you early on. And if you think this is bad enough, oh boy, this can get way worse as the Americans can intervene in the, in the conflict should you get more than 1% war score and they get friendly with, uh, with Texas or they get them in their sphere. So as you can see, we need to do this war just right to avoid the national catastrophe. For this, what I did was to first kill the Texan army with the initial 30,000 men stack that you start with, and then I mobilized my population and basically divide them divided them in equal parts so that I could siege every province in Texas all at the same time meaning that, meaning that the sieges would end at around the same time although be careful as San Antonio starts with the fort so for that I moved uh, my slightly big uh, slightly bigger stack with all the artillery I had there so that it could finish early or around the same time as the other provinces Once you have uh, sieged the entirety of Texas, you can uh, send the peace deal, and so we have managed to avoid the first problem. With the war over, we get some events and decisions con concerning Texas, like renaming provinces and doing some um, retribution. To Rio Rojo, Houston renamed to Punto de Morgan, Austin renamed to Ann Santana, Texas renamed to Texas, well, Texas to Texas, Fort Parker renamed to San Angelo. Oh, sure. 
Texas recaptured, the rebel state of Texas have been recaptured, a glorious victory for Mexico, a blow against the Malca tenants who seek to spread dissension and discord. Retribution for Texas. All pubs in, in Mexico where conditions supply are Texan, uh, Texan retribution, assimilation rate 40%. Uh, whoa! Many good Mexican men lost their lives during the Texan insurgency to ensure this never occurs again. We must assimilate the Texans and drive out any sense of difference of the Texan people, settling more Mexicans to be there to replace them, replace those who flee to the United States who would further integrate it into our great country. Oh damn. Okay. I just hope nobody's from Texas because probably already made all those Texas ang Texans angry. Indeed, the effect is probably all the Texans right now are trying to kill me after this. Okay. Ah, okay. But here comes disaster numero dos. Also, another thing that actually happened in real life, since our politi politicians are so shit just like they are nowadays, they basically destroyed a pastry shop during a party and refused to pay the bills. With this, the owner demanded reparations directly to the Mexican government, to no and to no one's surprise, they said no. And thanks to many other events that involved French citizens, the French demanded a huge amount of cash, Mexico said no, and war broke out. So this is also in the mod as an event, but unlike Mexico but back then, we have the money to pay and we have the knowledge of what happened next, so it's in our best interest to avoid the conflict with the French considering their army size. Also during this time, I recommend improving relations with Britain as they, that will come in handy later. Things will calm down for a bit until, well, we remember that, uh, well, there's a certain rebellion. Yeah, the Yucatan Rebellion will, will trigger around 1941-ish. And you can avoid the Rio Grande Rebellion if you recapture Texas. But, well, still, like, the Yucatan Rebellion won't be, a, well, it's not going to be a big, big threat as I was able to crush them easily. Also, after the collapse of the Central American Republic, there's a little state that forms called Los Altos that has some cores from Chiapas, so um, you know what's going to happen next. And finally, after some time, the dreaded event finally fired. So now we're at war with the Americans, and just as this happened, another rebellion, well, fired. With war on both fronts, the war is especially tedious if you lose just one battle. Well, just losing one battle can spell disaster for the whole nation thanks to the limited army and population we have at the start. And most likely Britain will not ally you at the start of the war, so this war is a war of survival that we will have to use guerrilla tactics of baiting the American army until Britain decides to come or until the Americans just run out of men. Either way, this took a lot of reloads, and if you want to see the full gameplay of all of this, I will leave, I will leave a link down in the description to the live stream. In this war, I had to basically bait the American armies and divide them into small stacks so I could destroy them with my bigger army. The thing is, is that most of the time you want to bait the American army in places where you can attack them while they are sieging you down as they have some amazing generals like Winfield Scott that has a uh, 3 plus on attack. So uh, defending is not really gonna help you that much. Also I exclusively focused on army tech as I was having, well, as having any little advantage will help you quite a bit. The only good thing of this war is that they, well, California won't have any troops, so you can cinch them down with a small stack while you, well, focus on the American army trying to kill you. But, long story short, it took like around three reloads, if I remember correctly, to manage to get just a white piece with the Americans. And, well, this is a good outcome, as the US will not bother us, as they don't get the course until they win the war in GFM. We can get so much more if we, can, if we can enforce our demands. So by this point, if you have improved relations with Britain, there is a chance that they will want to ally you. Sometimes you only need to get a few positive points with them just uh, to get the alliance, so that's why I recommend not allying, uh, allying anyone at the start, so that you don't get the penalty for having too many alliances. 
With Britain in the war and probably a lot of the US troops either dead or depleted, the US will completely collapse trying to fight both fronts. Now what we want, uh, what we need is for the US to send the peace offer where, they, where we disarm them so we can enforce our demands. And just like if we had lost the war, where Amer the Americans could have demanded a lot of land from us, we can now do the same for them. We can either decide to take, uh, to not take any land from them, take the Oregon tra uh, Tree territory, or push for all lands west of the Mississippi to be transferred to us. There is a last option to push for even Florida, but I don't really recommend this option, and I will explain this right now, actually. I don't recommend that option for a few things. You gain 20 infamy for it just because you want to get Florida and three other provinces that can cause trouble as you can get more valuable land with other decisions like Central America and the Caribbean and the thing is you do not get cores on like everything else west of the Mississippi. Because of this, even if you do the refute manifest destiny decision to remove the cores of the land that you took from the US, since you don't have cores on the on, well, on Florida, it won't remove the cores for the US and the CSA, so they might so the USA might declare war again for them. And the last reason being is that in my tests, should the US lose Florida, they will be able to get rid of sl slavery early on and avoid the civil war compared to just taking the lands west of the Mississippi in which in my tests it was like a 50-50 regarding the removal of sla uh, slavery early on and since we want the civil war to happen so, so that Americans are weakened by it it's better just by taking all the lands west of the Mississippi. Now that we have gained around a 50% of land increase or so we will not stop there. As if we just wait for a bit uh, for the infamy to lower just a bit, we can take the decision that gives us cores on the whole of Central America as well as Panama. And since we have a truce with the US, they won't be able to intervene even if the Central American nations are feared by them. And just as our armies were fast approaching the Colombian border, we might as well just take Panama to get the canal later on in the game. After the war with Colombia, I managed to buy Belize from the British, securing my grip over the Caribbean for an operation later on in the game, as we will want to take the riches of the Caribbean from the Spanish. And also, before anyone goes down there in the comments saying, Why did you not restore the empire? Yes, I did not restore the empire. Why? Because I was not going to put an Austrian on the Mexican throne. Mexico is a republic that has actually liberalized as it managed to reform out of the dictatorship during the war with the US. And why is this important? Why do I mention this that I am, well, I am a republic and I did not restore the empire? Well, this is important because if you actually restore the empire, well, there's not going to be an event where Santana gets ousted, just like how it happened in real life, getting the liberals in charge, and since the liberals got in charge, we can actually get a new constitution with some much needed reforms. The only downside to doing well, that is that if you decide to well, reform the constitution in a very divided society where half the population wants to keep the old centralist constitution implemented by Santana, is, well... Yep, this is also this is well, this also happened in real life. There was a civil war called the Reform War, where that nobody calls it a civil war here in Mexico, but it's just of one of many civil wars that happened here that nobody calls it a civil war. And just like with the the first uh, French intervention, 
Unlike the Mexican liberals of the time, we have the troops and a few alliances to deal with this. Ah, uh, well, well, technically, we don't have, we don't need, uh, well, we have the money to not take any loans, but uh, as you will see later, this would really not matter. So I, and my buddy Brazil, as the UK left me, destroy the conservative armies, and after that, it, well, uh, after that, we just sieged down everything, I annexed, the, well, defeated the conservatives, united the country, and it was now time to rebuild the country, the army, and have a peaceful life without any hiccups, Of course, as you can imagine, that did not happen. The United States, well, the American Civil War would trigger, but this time, at, at the start of it, the, the United States and the Confederates were allied. They declared war on me for Louisiana. Well, what, what, what? It doesn't stop there. Historically, during the Reform War, the Mexican government took a bit of loans, but President Juarez decided to well, stop paying the loans. The French used this as an excuse to invalidate, to well, invade and rally both well, Spain and Britain to launch an invasion of the coast of Mexico. Mexico managed to reach an agreement with both Spain and Britain to repay the loans, so they left, but the bloody French did not, did not leave and started what we call here in Mexico the Second French Intervention. So to recap, we are now at war with Britain, Spain, France, the Confederates and the United States. Knowing that this is, would be impossible to win, I pissed out Spain and Britain for some war reps. That left me with France and the, Confederate, well, the Confederates and the USA to deal with. The war with the US and the Confederates was actually easier than I thought, as after they both declared war on me, they declared the war against themselves, so it was a three-way conflict at this point in North America. After defeating and killing a few US stacks, as they were the war leader in the war for Louisiana, well, I noticed that the Civil War had ended, so I decided to peace out uh, as I managed to do a secondary goal that was well, making sure that the CSA would win so that the USA would be weaker in the future. I managed to get some money from the war and humiliate the US, so now that was two enemies down. Now it was time to win, well, with the French. Early in the war I called Brazil into the war and instead of the French going after me first they destroyed Brazil before heading into Central America. I managed to bring my mo my whole mobilized army to Honduras and won a, battle, a few battles, so instead of Cinco de Mayo and the Battle of Puebla, we have 18 de Febrero and 16 de Marzo with the first and second battles of La Ceiba in this universe. And just when I thought I would need to surrender as the French army was just way too damn big, I managed to ally the British and with their fleet they kicked the French navy's ass and now having the French, uh, French mainland compromised and undefended against a British, uh, British naval invasion, the cowardly French decided to peace out. Ha! Take that France! After that, a few, year, a few peaceful years came with nothing happening up until I had enough of this US intervention in my land and decided to teach them a big lesson. So I and Britain went to liberate New England from the Americans and you can guess how that went uh, how that went with two major powers declaring you at once. Once the war was over I handed the state I took uh, to the liberated New England and this basically marked the beginning of a uh, beginning of a series of conflicts in the North American continent as Mexico had enough from other powers bullying it and now it was th Mexico's time to actually bully them. The next target was Spain as they had the juicy Caribbean possessions. But why do the hard work when your ally can do it for you? 
Hey Spain, remember that uh, the part where you invaded for money? Well, this is my revenge. Also, uh, sorry Haiti, Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, but you must be brought into the fold. Then in the 1880s, the Conference of Paris took uh, hold, meaning a scramble for Africa time. The only problem was I was still way behind in technology as I was focusing on army texts for all the wars I had and, was still, and I still had a mostly illiterate population. Still, I managed to take Zanzibar and use it for my limited expansion in Africa. I say limited, but at the end I basically took over the whole Horn of Africa. Around this time, because of course the CSA with their infinite wisdom, thought it was a good idea to declare war on me for Louisiana, which they already had tried with US support and still didn't work. This was completely stupid as I could build more armies and mobilize more men than they, than they could. The US took this perfect uh, perfect timing to take back Maryland from the uh, CSA and that was the end of the Confederacy's dream of being a great power. For this display of insolence, I decided to take Florida for myself, securing my own Mare Nostrum in the Caribbean, while they, like, uh, like I said before, the US took Maryland. This was actually kinda bad, as the US started to regain their strength even after well, all of that, all the wars I had with them, so that is why I declared war again for New York to stop their industrial and immigration growth as in this month the US can get like a 100% boost to immigration attraction. Oh, and let me tell you, the following, following wars with the US, as there would be many to come, would be, one, uh, would be the most bloodiest conflicts I have ever seen in North America. Considering how, well, most of the times you don't see a lot of action in the North American continent in Victoria too. Because I did not want to deal with the American population in New York after I finished the war, I released a small t a state called the Manhattan Commune and gave them the rest of New York, well, in the rest of New York State, while I, with some council commands, I took, I took New York City proper and Long Island as they would be like, well, how could you tell it, like a base of operations, or forward operations if you can call it that. At this point, I was still allied to Britain, but Britain uh, decided to commit seppuku as it broke the only Victoria 2 rule that you can't break, and that's going over 25 I I infamy, and so I ditched Britain as I was not going to fight half of the war for Britain's shitty mismanagement on their expansion. As I was now without a great power ally, I was looking for a new partner, and just so happens that I became buddies with a little guy called the German Empire. I forgot to mention this before, but I got another decision to take British Columbia from the Brits since the first war with the Americans ended, but never, I never really took it as Britain was my best buddy at that time, but seeing how they were basically killing themselves uh, with my new best friend Germany, I went to the land, to northern lands of Columbia, finally taking the last claims of the former Spanish Empire in North America. The war was not that difficult as I only had to deal with the Canadians and before I knew it, they were, well, the Germans just pissed me out.
This caused Britain problems and with this the Americans took the opportunity to retake New England from the Brits as they were in their sphere. Since the Brits were really weakened by, by the constant wars they had over their containment because they got over 25 infamy, well the USA easily reincorporated Ingl in New England and I was not happy with it so it was yet another time for another bloody and costly war. I only managed to get to Massachusetts in that war, so New England proper would have to wait uh, so I could take it in another war, but I still released New England from the state of Massachusetts. Also there was a slight problem since it was now the 1900s, the Americans actually discovered gas attack like way earlier than well, normally yeah, well, you would expect and when the war the next war started to take New England proper well I, well I suffered a few defeats because of that but I because I was catched up on army tech I quickly discovered gas defense so the war resumed as normal and all in all it was a pretty quick uh, war something that could not be said for the upcoming wars Ah, well, you remember how they got well, the gas attack? Well, eh, the thing was that because I didn't have a gas attack at that point, they, they couldn't get gas defense. So it was time to, well, return, turn those numbers around in the next war. And just by killing a lot of troops while I had the gas attack buff, I got like 51% of the war score. So you see kids, that's why the first, you need, uh, the first thing you need to research once the 1900s rolls around is to get the military directionism tech that can give you gas attack. After a few years of constant battles, the Confederates joined the fun, and, and in this war, we both burned the US to the ground, so much uh, that the US was taken from the great powers list. I first decided to take Pennsylvania off of them as well, but I really did not, did not like the border gore, so I quickly just returned the land to the US using also commands. Uh, so basically I just w wasted 5.5 FME. Yay. <laughs> also during the war I started construction of the Panama Canal, which just so happens that the construction ended after the war. The CSA also paced out for Maryland and West Virginia, leaving the US as a rotten corpse of its former self. The years after that were pretty peaceful only for the Germans to go, or, uh, to go and decide they wanted to dismantle Russia. And because they were so OP, they managed to dismantle the Russians. At this, well, at this point, they were the Soviets. This war so good, was so quickly that Germany dismantled Russia in just four months. Four months! That's some real blitzkrieg right there, if you ask me. And, well, fun fact, uh, well, when I took the decision for the course on British Columbia, he also gave me course on some Russian territories in Alaska, so after Germany dismantled Russia, well, I just got them for free. And after all of this, you, you guessed it, folks, another war with the US broke out because of f***ing Maryland. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I love the young people. This time, since the Confederates were in my sphere, we crushed the Americans pretty easily and we just basically lowered them even below secondary power. I also decided to take New Jersey and redid, all the, bo and redid the borders in well, North America, giving New York to New England, as well giving New Jersey to New England to clean up this mess. I decided to also give Kentucky to the CSA as compensation for their work against the Americans and serving as a semi-ally? Semi 
Also, remember like the whole thing where Germany dismantled Russia? Well, it turns out that well, Germany got way over infamy limit, got like over like 161 infamy limit. I didn't know that was even possible, but it's possible. And so the British declared war on the Germans the, with the containment gases belly, and that basically turned into an endless war where nothing really happened because the only thing that really happened was naval battles between them. The years after that would be pretty uneventful, at least for the Mexican nation, as the British would continue to gauge a wage war on the Germans trying to stop their complete dominance over Europe. The people of the former United States, bitterly frustrated by their government's failure, rose up and so the society of the civil religion would rise to prominence, seizing power and declaring a fascist dictatorship. Many Mexican and Confederate officials would be worried by the sudden news of, and over the years they would be on alert, and rightfully so, as on the eve of 1935 the new American state would launch an Arctic conquest operation for all the seized land from the Confederates. Unlike the time, in, unlike the previous war, the Mexican Republic was facing financial struggles after the Los Angeles stock market crash of 1932. As so, the Mexican government, fearful of the population's reaction to intervene in a conflict with the economic crisis at hand, the Confederates would have to fight against this enemy alone. And so, as we have reached 1936, 100 years have passed since the start of this campaign, with many events that happened throughout the span of these years, or well, this century. Mexico has gone from an unstable dictatorship eyed by many foreign powers to the hegemon of the West, attracting many new immigrants to start a new life in the multicultural state that is Mexico. Controlling the largest industry, Mexico's future is bright, with only the only threat being the one across the Mississippi. But that's for a story for another day. Now the Mexican state ranges from the frozen lands of the Colombia Vancouver to the reaches of the Panama Canal, from the plantations in the Caribbean to the islands of Hawaii, and the colonies overseas in the Horn of Africa, all ruled and connected by a city that started it all. <laughs>